<laughs> These humans are complete idiots. Now I want you to think as hard as those puny brains of yours can manage. Have you ever spared a pig or a cow? Because it begged you for its life? Hey everyone, I really want to talk about Yoshihiro Togashi's Hunter Hunt. Hunter Hunter rarely tells a story without also carrying some underlying meaning, some more or less hidden metaphor. Kurapika's rage-filled crusade tells a story of a lust for revenge that can consume even the kindest, most loving people, envelop them in these negative emotions to the point of distancing them from the people they hold dearest. His story makes it very obvious that rage and anger can be a source of great power for anyone, but these exact feelings can also metaphorically, and in Kurapika's case quite literally, bind us to the object of our anger, preventing us from letting go, moving on and growing. Kilua's story is in a lot of ways a more typical coming of age story. Defying his father and later removing his brother's control over him are actions that tell a tale of separating and distancing yourself from your parents, your family, the old generation, in order to forge your own path and realize your most genuine Himself. But the story I want to focus on today is the story and the meaning behind Meruem, the god king of the Chimera Ants. For the woefully uninitiated, the Chimera Ants are an invasive species that operates by consuming local animals and taking on their traits in a sort of hyper-evolution. This, if left unchecked, leads to them taking over natural habitats rather quickly. In the Chimera Ant arc of Hunter x Hunter, these ants get a taste of humans and eventually hunters, which they call special humans. This leads to these beasts taking on increasingly human shapes and traits, they learn to communicate via speech, they form distinct personalities that require names, and they eventually learn to control Nen, the magic of Hunter x Hunter. Ultimately, the ants give birth to Meruem, a being born to be king. Not because of his lineage, but because he's objectively the very strongest. Meruem can consume other people to conquer them, to gain their powers. He's physically immensely strong, he's absolutely ruthless, and worst of all, he knows with every ounce of his being that he's meant to lead. Meruem and his royal guard then go on a hunger-driven rampage, killing humans indiscriminately and taking over anime North Korea, with anime Kim Jong-un and all. While learning more about the world of humans and killing them to satisfy his hunger and boredom, Meruem challenges masters of chess and go to games, only to beat them in a matter of hours. Eventually though, he comes across a blind girl named Komugi. Komugi is a bumbling fool, she's weak, she probably can't even do magic, and yet, for some reason, Meruem can't seem to beat this weak little girl at the board game she has mastered, Gungi. This awakens something in Meruem. Although I find myself frustrated, I enjoy it at the same time. What I don't understand is why. He's confused by the fact that he's clearly not the best at something, that there is a lowly human that continuously and effortlessly defeats him in what he sees as a battle of minds. All the while, Meruem and his court continue their crusade against humanity, expanding into more human-centered areas and conquering them, eventually drawing the attention of our heroes. After that, a bunch of really, really, really cool fights happen, which culminate in Meruem fighting and beating Netero, the leader of the hunters and the de facto representative of humanity. As they fight, Meruem presents his thoughts on humanity and that he has learned to respect certain individuals like Netero and Komugi, whom he plans to keep in enclosures once he governs the planet. Netero, however, has different plans. He has a nuclear bomb, technically a dirty bomb, called the Rose implanted in his body, that is rigged to explode once his heart stops beating, and he takes Meruem down with himself, explaining to the king that nobody could come close to the malevolence and cruelty of humans, and that nobody can match humanity's ability to kill each other. Meruem barely survives this explosion, but he is shown to suffer from severe radiation poisoning his body falling apart at the cellular level. He returns to his castle, demonstrates his newfound empathy to his subjects and to humans alike, and eventually dies an agonizing but beautiful death. He spends his last hours frantically searching for Komugi, whom he is implied to have platonic feelings of love for. He finds her in an underground bunker where the two of them continue to play matches of Gungi until they both pass away. The final moments of this dictator god monster are, with this, surprisingly somber, beautiful, and touching. Good night, Marilyn. But why do I want to talk about him so badly? It's because I believe that, more than every other arc in Hunter x Hunter, the Chimera Ant's story is built as a metaphor, a meditation on the nature of humanity. This can be seen in the development of most of the subject ants like Cold, Wealthin, Bloster or Rama, but it is most transparently obvious when looking at Meruem himself. The story of Meruem is in many ways the story of humanity, the story of our nature and the story of our strives, tribulations, shortcomings and weaknesses, but just as much of our strengths, our unique abilities and connections. In short, it's a story of the things that differentiate us from other animals, the things that make humans distinctly human. 
Many people would argue that these things might be our ability to use and craft complex tools, our appreciation of religion or art, or even our love of gossip. But the idea that Hunter Hunter puts forward is that the most human thing about us is our capacity for both all-consuming hate and pure, all-encompassing love. I would even go as far as to say that goodness and its corruption by feelings of hate or revenge are pretty central themes in Hunter Hunter. Take Gon for example, he's a pure, innocent little boy throughout the entire show, in many ways a depiction of all that is good in humanity, like passion, trust, cooperation, and love. But it's this exact love that gives rise to a hatred and nihilism that has him willing to sacrifice the very essence of his being just to avenge a person that is no longer here that can never benefit from his anger. These ideas of humanity and its vices and virtues are repeated over and over in the life of Meru. His powers, both physically as an individual as well as metaphorically as the king, stem from his humanity. His rise, his potential, and even his eventual downfall can all be attributed to humans, either from within Meru himself or from outside to actual humans. His power even centers largely around consuming humans to take over their powers to fuse with them in a twisted way. Before Meruem is even born, the specific tribe of Chimera Ants we watch in the series evolves so quickly and explosively because of their consumption and imitation of humans. After the first couple of humans are integrated into the Chimera Ant bloodline, they quickly learn human speech and they almost immediately demand to have names, an attribute that is notably an exclusively human and individualistic trait. As they continue to evolve, they learn about men and its uses and they master it by fighting with and copying human hunters. All in all, the first ants quickly become the dominant species in their part of the world. Not only because of their ant traits and sense of community, but also because of their humanity. Some of the ants even start to remember their former lives as humans and they start acting in their own personal interest which makes them individually stronger but slowly erodes the ants biggest strength as a species, their unity. It is important to note that almost every time an ant regains some of their former humanity it is depicted as a loss for the species of ants as a massive emotional boon for the individual ants which gains access to an understanding of love and respect they couldn't have gained access to otherwise. Once Meruem is born, he quickly ditches the original ant hive and invades the fictional version of North Korea, directly inserting himself into human power structures and taking over the very human role of supreme leader. He rises to power and becomes a world leader not because of the ant structures and patterns but because of human ones. Shortly thereafter he experiences an emotion that no other ant has experienced before. Or boredom. This boredom moves Meruem to challenge grandmasters of various games until he eventually runs into Komugi, who is bound to be his downfall as well as his redemption. After playing for a while, Meruem does another characteristically human thing. He develops feelings for Komugi, platonically falls in love with her, and it changes his entire view on life. He hurts himself to continue playing with her and he is willing to protect her even though she is not physically capable and fit to survive at all. Meruem, who has up until now and a little ironically seen all other beings as nothing but bugs is suddenly torn about the death of little children, a meaningless animal that isn't even of his own species. Meruem through his interactions with and feelings for Komugi develops one of the most human traits of all, compassion and empathy. Humanity also eventually leads to his downfall and defeat as a leader. His human arrogance and individualism in assuming that he could never lose to Netro, as well as his care for Komugi, create cracks in the Chimera Ants' defenses that allow the human hunters around Gon and Netro to figure out the plan of their enemy and to develop a plan to destroy the ants. These aspects are expressed and underlined once more in the explosive conclusion to Meruem's story, the fight with Isaac Netero. The king is deeply moved by learning his given name from Netero, as knowing this name makes him, symbolically, an individual. He is no longer simply the king of ants or the great leader or some other role. All of a sudden he is Meruem. He is his own person with his own wishes like spending time with Komugi and his own fears and desires. The point at which he learns his own name, discovers his own self is sort of a turning point for Meruem. He can never go back to being simply a role in the society of ants. Meruem also in his odd way displays the compassion he learned by communicating with Komugi. He explains that he now understands the value of certain powerful or special human beings like Netero and Komugi and that he wants those being spared. Additionally, Meruem learns another emotion that forces him to understand others in a way that he couldn't before. Dread. When he is faced with Netero's maliciousness, he feels pure dread and he fears for his very existence for the first time in his brief life. Looking at the beginning of this confrontation, Meruem mocks and belittles Netero for daring to fight him alone by declaring that humanity's greatest weakness is their inability to work together as opposed to the ants. This belief serves to make Meruem's humanity even more apparent, as he is just blatantly wrong about this. It is the very individuality of humanity that gave rise to him, and he is the one that came into this fight alone. Netero, on the other hand, 
Grand fights as a sort of representative for all of humans, all of humanity, with this collective power and more importantly cruelty of our entire species working together in the form of a dirty bomb. As a side note, Arlem struggles with his emotions in this fight and learns to appreciate other beings for what they are. Every passing minute we can see the direct opposite thing happening in Gon. A good natured human struggles with his emotions and slowly but steadily gives into his basest instincts of revenge and destruction. Anyways, Gon's downfall, Netero's death, his defeat of Meruem all explore the deepest and darkest part of humanity, our capacity for hatred, destruction, maliciousness and cruelty. The king is killed by a dirty bomb, a bomb with nuclear material attached to it. What kills Meruem isn't a particularly strong bomb or a particularly special way of killing someone. The story even goes out of its way to explain that many, many, many people have suffered the same fate that Meruem had. While the use of a human murdering weapon by Netero is of course a symbol of the hunters acknowledging Meruem and the ants as a real threat, it also makes it very clear that the king and his court could have never been able to match our capacity for killing our own kind. You know nothing of the bottomless malice within the human heart. After this fight, Meruem stops killing needlessly. In his interactions with both his royal guard and Welfin, it is clear that something has changed, that he has grown up. The king no longer wants to destroy, he doesn't even seem particularly interested in ruling anymore. All he desires is a genuine connection with another being. All of this leads to Meruem's final moments, which are symbolically both his downfall and death as a leader and king, but also his rise and birth as a human being filled with compassion and love. He casts aside all of his royal allures, his pride and his arrogance, he even bows in front of Helm. He is willing to debase everything he was born for just to fight for this very human urge of connecting with another person as individuals. After finding Komugi, he reveals that his body is falling apart, that he will not live for much longer, and that all he wants to do is spend his last hours with Komugi playing Gungi. In a very touching scene, it is made clear that human individuality made the ants weak, it made them turn on each other, it made them arrogant and uncooperative and aggressive and sometimes idiotic. The more human they became, the more vulnerable they became. But at the same time, the more human they became, the more human Meruem became, the more he was able to feel all these wonderful emotions that most animals only have limited access to. Love and respect for other beings that is so strong that one happily sacrifices himself to protect them. Ultimately, Meruem learns these truths about humanity himself. He is deeply moved and even changed by Komugi. He understands on some level that the murders he committed weren't right. He is also scared, absolutely terrified of the malice, the all-consuming negative emotions displayed by Netero and all of humanity in the former's final moments, and he experiences real love and tender care for another person. So, does the story of Meruem point out a fatal flaw in the nature of humanity? I certainly believe so. Every single time that Meruem, or any ant for that matter, gives in to his human side, the ants as a species get weaker, easier to defeat. It's true that interactions between individualistic, selfish beings tend to be messy and fucked up and chaotic and cruel, but I think Meruem also shows that this exact mess, this chaos that happens when individuals attempt to coexist, this human individualism regularly gives rise to wonderful, sublime emotions that are impossible to experience when we don't subject ourselves to the hell hell of living with other individuals. The king's humanity was, without a doubt, his downfall. But at the same time, it was what made it possible for him to experience life and all the marvelous things it has to offer through his own eyes. Alright, that's it, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, maybe consider subscribing to my channel for more of my content. I upload every other Wednesday, so stick around to hear more of my incredible takes, and until then, feel free to check out my other videos right here. You can also follow me on Twitter, you'll find all the links in the description. Thanks for watching!